Welcome back to another episode of the For the Property Investor podcast. And of course, we've got the weekly news segment here with Nick Bendel bringing us the news. Welcome, Nick. Thank you for having me, Owen. This is always one of the highlights of my week. Well, it's it's definitely a highlight of you know, your Monday morning every week. It, it certainly is. And, yes, uh, it, as it is mine. Yeah, I mean, if chatting with each other is one of the highlights of our, our week, some people might say we we need to maybe improve what's going on in the rest of our lives, but nonetheless, well, I enjoy it. That's why I clarified it, you know, first thing Monday morning, you know, it's, yeah, the news is hot off the press, so, you know, it's got to be the highlight. It's definitely the highlight of every Monday, 8.30 a.m. Of all the things I do every Monday at 8.30 a.m., this is the number one. Yes, of course. Um Nick, what's been, what's been um, the highlight of your the past week since we've spoken last? Well, well since we spoke, uh, so I'm normally in Sydney, Owen. Uh, last week, I flew to Brisbane to attend a PD day for SFG, the mortgage aggregator, which was really enjoyable. And I gave a presentation at the event about the top seven marketing channels being used by mortgage brokers throughout Australia right now. That was wow. really enjoyable. I, uh, I I don't know if it's because I'm an attention because I'm an attention seeker, but I always enjoy giving speeches. Wow. Well, it's uh, I didn't know we had a fully fledged um, you know uh, public speaker um, in our presence. Um, but uh, it, it's uh, I'm I'm sure there was lots of great content. And uh, how many people were at the conference? Out of interest, I think there were about eighty or ninety. Okay, all right. Yeah, so P- uh, PD Day, Professional Development Day, wasn't it? Exactly. Uh, I believe they get held every quarter or so. I've been to a few SFG events and they're always fantastic, really, really good educational sessions. And one thing I notice is the camaraderie amongst the brokers. Uh, they get on really well and I, I think that's part, of, I think that reflects on the culture within SFG. Hmm, hmm. No, um, yes, mortgage brokers, they do a, a great thing for uh, great public service, uh, uh, trying to navigate what all of the uh, the bank products and policies out there that are always ever evolving and um, trying to keep the banks honest as much as possible. Well, we might talk about that soon with our first news story, but just before we get to that, what's happened over the past week with you and Leefield? Well, uh, lots of things. Um, today is uh, first day of the month, so that's um, uh, end of month in our world. Um, so that's when everyone gets paid today. So we're, we're very popular people today. Um, and um, uh, so the last week has been busy getting ready for that. And um, and uh, as we're growing, we're uh, looking for new staff and uh uh, and all of those fun things, but um, uh, maybe more exciting things coming up. Um, we've got uh, some new uh, business partners joining us, uh, whether they be buyers agents or, or as well as sales agents. So, yeah, lots of exciting stuff. Well, great to see Leafield going from strength to strength. For those who don't know, it's in your business is in five states and you're yes. helping... Uh, property investors throughout the country yes with property management um, looking after property investors all across the country and we partner with a lot of buyers agents as well as sales agents to be able to help them build a property management business on their behalf so yes uh, thanks for letting me have the the plug nick my pleasure i know you're in a good mood now but i have a feeling our first news story is going all to right. fire you up a little Okay, hit me with it. Big banks attack broker commissions. Commonwealth Bank and Westpac have called for a cap on mortgage broker commissions, according to an article in The Advisor. In an appearance before the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Economics annual public hearings with the big four banks, Commonwealth Bank CEO Matt Common said mortgage broker pay should be reviewed if there are concerns about inappropriate lending behaviour. Common said... There is no balanced scorecard. There is no fixed pay. Brokers are entirely remunerated based on the number of loans they sell. 
it simply cannot be that there is an undue level of concern over what are we talking about? A few hundred lenders compared to the 20,000 mortgage brokers that don't have any of the controls in this regard. Westpac CEO Peter King made similar comments. Mortgage brokers do not have caps, so the banks have been operating since the Banking Royal Commission at a different level to them. Owen, should caps be placed on broker commissions? Absolutely not. Um, in fact, there should be the opposite. There should be some minimum um, pay standards put in for brokers so that um, um, banks can't keep on cutting uh, commissions of brokers. It's uh, They've been doing it um, on and on all the time. And it's something that, um, yeah, uh, it, it just reminds me of the Banking Royal Commission back in, what, 2016, 17, was it, um, Nick? You might remember better than me. But, um, yes, and Matt Common was there again banging the, uh, banging the desk saying, it's not us poor innocent banks. It's those nasty brokers. He was trying to deflect the blame and put it all on brokers. And what's happened since then, you know, the, the market share of brokers, because of the good value they provide to the mm. public, has just grown and grown and grown. And so uh, what are they saying? Um, that um, brokers work on a different level to them? Yes, they're a lot more accountable. Legally, they're a lot more accountable to the advice they give. Bank employees aren't individually legally responsible for the advice they give. Uh, and the only advice they can give is based on the products of that individual bank. So, yeah, um, maybe maybe the bank should be getting rid of their um, uh, their internal loan writers altogether and just outsourcing completely to brokers. And just like a lot of the second tier and um, second tier lenders and a lot of the non-bank lenders and um, a, a lot of regional banks that have to rely on broker channel and they actually work with brokers and they actually um, work with them to be able to get the products right get the policies right to be able to suit the public not the banks mm, well further to what you said a moment ago brokers are bound by yeah. the best interest duty and banks aren't exactly it's it's brokers are legally responsible to provide the advice that best suits the client and it's got nothing to do with commissions it's got nothing to do with anything other than that because they're legally responsible they can lose their license if they don't give the advice that is in the best duty of the client um, banks aren't uh, aren't held to that same high level mm -hmm. well, well one of the things matt common from cba said he said the bank channel was quote a much lower risk channel than the mortgage broking channel does that sound plausible to you absolutely not absolutely not it's it, it's uh, most of the fraud that has been uh most of the uh uh, fraud that has been conducted within the industry has been done by employees of banks. And when they, um, when we used to hear it time and time again, and it still happens, uh, where bank employees, to be able to make their budgets, to be able to earn their, their commissions um, so that they can keep their job by by hitting their budgets, um, they, they have, the only way they had to was to be able to fiddle the numbers to be able to make it work uh, so that um, uh, they, they can keep their jobs. Now, of course, if they got found out or when they got found out, they would lose their jobs because, of course, they've done the wrong thing, which is the right thing to do. But the banks aren't legally responsible for the mistakes they've made at that point they just say oh yes we had a bad employee yes i we got rid of them mm, well, problem well, solved right now owen uh, according to the latest data mortgage broker market share is at 74.1 percent i'm wondering what do you think would be better for consumers if that broker market share 
increased or decreased? Oh, absolutely uh, increased. Um, and it's continuing to increase. And there's no reason why the, the broker share of the lending market um, can't get to 90%. Mm. I, I, look, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And of course, we love brokers, but it's not us saying how great brokers are. It's consumers saying how great brokers yeah. are. And year after year after year, broker market share broker market share keeps increasing. And people have figured out that uh, the banks, they just don't offer the same value. No, they're, um, they're not interested. Yes. And, and at the end of the day, uh, it's not the brokers who are approving these loans. It's mm. the banks who are approving these loans. Um, the, the brokers are saving the bank's money by um, not being on a salary with the bank. They're going out and sourcing business themselves to provide to any number of one of these banks that they they can write loans with and um, they're doing all of the hard work to prepare the the loan application to be presented to the bank and good brokers are there to be able to put a loan application in once so their job is to be able to make sure that the loan fits with each individual bank and um, so for them to be able to do that and provide that level of service to a bank at, with no fixed costs uh, i mean uh, these banks should be applauding brokers mm. for the wonderful job they do well you're preaching to the converted thank you for sharing your thoughts let's move from finance to property for our second story Queensland gets new rental standards. In Queensland, minimum housing standards have come into effect for all rental properties as of 1 September 2024. These minimum standards previously came into effect for new tenancies, including re lease renewals, from 1 September 2023. Now they've been applied to all other rental properties. Minimum housing standards specify that rental properties must be weatherproof and structurally sound, be in good repair, have functioning locks or latches on all external doors and windows, be free from vermin, damp and mould, have adequate plumbing and drainage, provide privacy in bathroom areas and have flushable toilets, have a functioning cooktop if a kitchen is provided and include the necessary fixtures for a functional laundry. Owen, you operate in five states with your business Lee Field, so, so you're across rental standards throughout the country. What do you think of Queensland's rental standards are they reasonable or unreasonable? No, they're they're very reasonable, and it's and it's not like they're they're doing anything groundbreaking here that's going to disrupt the industry. They're they're just putting into law reasonable minimal minimum standards, which uh, as an industry we we shouldn't be accepting as property managers. We shouldn't be accepting properties that don't meet these minimum standards anyway. Um, yeah, we, we need to, yeah, un unfortunately there are some, um, you yeah, know, property owners uh, out there who feel like their property is up to standard and whether they have lower standards um, that they're used to um, or they just don't want to spend the money on fixing up the property. Um, for whatever reason, then um, we, yeah, we we need to push back on those owners and say, hey, it's um, we're not going to accept it. And now, at least in the state of Queensland, it's um, by law, you know, we, we can't actually rent it out. So as is. Well, well, following up on those comments, let's say there were no rental standards anywhere, and property investors were allowed to do whatever they liked with their property. I'm wondering, Owen, do you think it would still be smart for landlords to meet the kind of standards that Queensland's introduced in order to maximise their rent and return on investment? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's um, it's always advantageous to be able to get the best quality tenant and to get the property uh, leased as quickly as possible and to get the highest uh, maximum rent potential um you you always want to have these what what are now in law in Queensland minimum standards in your property uh, and if you want to keep 
that good quality tenant for as long as possible, yes, you want to keep this minimum standard as well. And in your experience, what are some of the common mistakes that property investors make regarding maintenance? Um, it's usually they're they're making the mistakes based on you know uh, affordability, wanting to save money, um, which is understandable. We're we're all in this um, uh, you know cost of living crisis and with higher interest rates than 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 normal, and um, so everyone's feeling the pinch. Um, but yeah, the, unfortunately, there's now some things that just have to have the money spent on them, and which it, it, I mean, these there's been minimum standards, you know, in law. It's not like this is the first time there has been, um, for for quite a while regarding you know, specific items in a house and specific things and and how it gets serviced. Um, but yeah, that, that's the the biggest mistake. People are wanting to save money, um, and no one's maliciously. Um, or very few people at least are maliciously trying to provide accommodation that's not up to standard um, and is not compliant. So, hmm. Okay, well, well, let's move on to our final story, Owen. Economist says a huge fall in inflation is coming. Annual inflation fell from 3.8% in June to 3.5% in July, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, moving us closer to the Reserve Bank's target range of 2 to 3%, and therefore a possible future reduction in the cash rate. Economist Chris Richardson has predicted there will soon be, quote, a huge fall in inflation. Quote, but I don't think that means the Reserve Bank is about to cut rates, he said, naming, quote, the first half of 2025 as the most likely start of the rate cutting cycle. Federal and state governments have introduced a range of subsidies to reduce costs for households, but Richardson says the reduction in inflation would happen despite these subsidies rather than because of them. Quote, rather, rates will eventually fall because they've been higher here and around the world for some time, and that medicine is working. Add it in a dash of slowdown in China, and the global fight against inflation is gradually being won. Owen, do you think Chris Richardson is right to predict that there will soon be a huge fall in inflation? Um, I, I definitely think it's trending down and it'll continue to. I, I don't know about a, I'm not an economist, so um, I can't um, predict the, the, the hugeness or smallest um, uh, of um, the, the drop rate of inflation but um yes uh, i definitely agree it's it's uh seems to be definitely trending down now but uh we, we can really only predict within the next two to three months yeah it's uh what's happening in in six months time who knows a lot could happen and a lot could change um but it doesn't definitely does seem like we're we're trending down and it's uh we'll hopefully see those rate drops as a result um, earlier in the new year than than later, hopefully. Mm. Well, if those rate cuts do happen in the first half of 2025, I'm wondering, would rate cuts affect the property market or have buyers and investors already priced in those rate cuts? Um, no, it seems like there's a bit of a holding pattern in the market at the moment, you know, talking to a lot of buyers agents and sales agents, as we do. Um, there is quite a bit of um, uh, activity from vendors coming on the market at the moment, uh, wanting to take advantage of the, hopefully the the, the spring rush. Um, but uh, there seems to be a lot of buyers that are sitting tight and um, waiting for that right property to make that decision to buy. Um, so for the next six months until rates do possibly drop, uh, we might be seeing a bit of a buyer's market. Well, I'm very curious to see how things play out with inflation and with interest rates like everyone. I, I would love it if inflation can get to that RBA target range sooner rather than later and, and if rate cuts can follow uh, not too long after that. Yes, 
means we can all get on with our lives and um and but we'll, we'll have new problems to complain and whinge about i'm sure um, <laughs> and i look forward to hearing all your whinging next week owen thank you for sharing your thoughts today always find it interesting and insightful thank you nick and waiting with bated breath to be able to hear what's happened in your exciting week over the next week have a great day all right see you bye